Carmela, did you know you have a connection to the wine we're having today? I do? Well, how? Well, today we are tasting and reviewing an Italian wine on our next Italian wine adventure from the region of Puglia. Ooh, what's the wine? Well, the wine is called Celice Salentino. Wow, and it's, you could see him now with those hands. I know, and it's a <laughs> wine that red wine lovers need to know about. Oh, I love it. So should we do it? Let's. All right. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Wine Pair Podcast. I'm Joe, your sommelier of a reasonably priced wine, and this is my wife and my wine pairing partner in crime, Carmilla. Hi there. And we are the Wine Pair. Hello. Have I screwed you up with that little? Oh my gosh! Change in the hello. Me, me I don't know. Off. I you got to change things hello. up every once in a while. Okay. Uh, <laughs> a quick orientation for those of you who may be new to the podcast. This is what we do. In each episode, we learn about and we taste and review three wines that are reasonably priced. That means under twenty dollars and should be easy for you to find. And our podcast, just so you know, is made for people like us. It's people who really like wine but want to learn more about different wines and maybe find new wines to explore and then also feel more confident when we talk about wines and we order wines. Hmm. Yeah, so if that sounds like you... Just like us who are cool. Cool and and hip. Funny and... Yeah, yeah, awesome. And awesome, yeah. So if that sounds like you... You're in the right place. And you should also know that when we taste and rate these wines on our podcast, we are going to be honest. Mm-hmm. We won't pull any punches. Never. And we are proud to say that we are officially recommended by the editors of Decanter Magazine from their October issue who call us fun, irreverent, chatty, and entertaining. <laughs> okay, so in this episode, Carmela, we are taking another Italian wine adventure. Hooray! Yeah, and this time, as we said in our little intro, we're going to be learning about and tasting and reviewing a wine called Salice Salentino, mm. which is actually made from the Negro Amaro grape, which we'll talk about more later. And the wine comes from the Puglia area of Italy. Oh, lovely. Yeah, and so for those of you out there in listening land who are like, hey man, I've never heard of Puglia. We're going to tell you a little something about it. That's right. Just know that Puglia is a hidden gem in Italy. Oh, absolutely. Maybe we shouldn't share all this. No, I think we should. I think we should let the gem out of the bag. I don't know. But (laughs) that gem, at least, I think is hidden for most Americans. Mm -hmm. But I think Italians know all about Puglia. Yes. And Europeans know all about Puglia. Some people, Europeans and Italians, they will vacation in Puglia. That's right. So, And then just to picture it, if you're like, well, where is is Puglia? Mm -hmm. Uh, If you think of Italy as a boot... It's the heel of the boot of Italy. And it's, it's the norm- Achilles. Yeah, the Achilles. Achilles all the way down to like the heel. Right. Yeah. Right. And it's known for warm weather and beautiful beaches. Yes, right, Carmela? It absolutely is. Yeah. Now, so I think those of you who listen to this podcast know that I tend to do a lot of the talking. Which is fine. Even, though, like even though you're chatty. No, I, no, no, I no, do no. The talking. No, they were referring to you being the chatty one. Oh, I'm really? chatty, maybe every other in the normal life I, circumstances. Yes, right, yeah, right. okay. But for this section of the episode of the podcast, I'm going to have you do the talking, chatty Carmela. Okay. okay, I'm already laughing because because you are the chatty one in the podcast, and I try and say something, and you finish everything that I, I cut say. you off. I just did it. Which is fine. I just did it again. There you go. Okay. So, okay, are you okay with that, though? I'm going to let you I'm, be chatty? I'm ready. Okay. I'm ready. Can we so, just put you on mute? <laughs> yes, I think so. No, I'll just ask some questions. Okay. Okay. And the reason that we're going to have you talk is because you have real-life experience in Puglia, and I don't. So, here, <laughs> we, without further ado, here we go. Carmela? Yes. What is your connection to Puglia, Italia? Well, my grandfather... And my grandmother were both born in the Puglia area. On which side of the family? Uh, both on my mo- I'm sorry, on my mother's side. Mm-hmm. So my grandfather was born in a little area called Carbonara. And my grandmother was born in a little area called Valenzano. And they're both in or around Bari, which is in Puglia. Mm-hmm. And Bari is kind of the big town in, right. in Puglia. What do you remember about visiting Bari in Puglia? Well, there was a big lead up because we were going to visit a lot of family there. So mm-hmm. it was a very exciting part of our trip. And so what I remember and the you most... you were young, right? I was. I was 20. Well, the first trip, and then I think like 15, the second trip. So, mm-hmm. um, so yeah, I actually had to talk to my mom today to kind of jog my <laughs> memory. But anyway, so I remember family more than anything. Family and food and really just being waited on hand and foot. Mm. 
Um, really? It was lovely. And it was uh, beautiful. It's a beautiful area. And we did spend time, you know, uh, walking the piazzas and the neighborhoods and along the... Arm in arm, probably, right? Yeah, absolutely. And the other thing was at the time, and I don't know um, if it's the same, but not many people spoke English mm, there, mm-hmm. even in our family. So we did a lot of talking with our hands yeah. and with our emotions and with our bodies and, you know, hugging and smiling the whole time. <laughs> yeah. Pretending like you understood each other. Right, yeah. Right. Um, did you ever the go- language of love. Now, now Puglia is known, well known for beaches and yes. warm weather. Did you ever go to a beach in Puglia? Do you remember We this? did. We did. In fact, it was hot. I mean, it was uh, June, but it was Southern Italy, right? Mm-hmm. It is Southern Italy. So it was really warm. And we did walk to the beach. And I remember it was very beautiful, blue water, but rocky. Like it was a lot of uh, mm. big white rocks. And we walked over like a bridge and, you know, trying to like lie down on, on rocks. Rocks, lie down like, on rocks. But yeah. everybody was doing it. So we just sort of, you know. But I kind of remember the same thing when we went to Genoa. In Genoa in Nervi. Right, right, right. right. Kind of similar, right? Similar, but I feel like the rocks were large. And for some oh, reason, like big rocks. Like big? Yeah, I don't know. We kind of lie Like you on lay rock, on the big like rock. Like a boulder. It was a oh big my gosh. boulder. Yeah. Oh, wow. So that's what I remember. It's been really warm. We also spent some time down at the waterfront, like mm. down where the boats were coming in with fish, you know, and they were cleaning the fish. And my grandfather, who was like in his, you know, I don't know, early 80s at the time, decided because he was a very adventurous eater that he was going to eat directly from the boats. My God. Well, you know, we thought he had an iron stomach. But he did turn up very ill oh, yeah. that evening. And medicine at the raw, time. Raw seafood raw right out of the seafood, ocean might not be. Breaking them open. Yeah. Nobody else did it. Only my grandfather. And he did get sick. Oh, very man. sick. So anyway. Um, but yeah. Uh, yeah. We did spend time at the beach, though, for sure. Do you ever remember, kind of on the back on the, like, sort of what our podcast is about. Did you mm. ever drink any wine when you were in Puglia? Well, I, I probably did. Because at that age, you can drink. What? What? <laughs> and so I probably had a little sip here and there. But what I remember most is that we were always drinking wine that my relatives had made. Like oh, okay. they would make wine in their homes, in their basements. Um, and they always would bring their bottles of wine. You know, when- So it was always homemade. It was always homemade. In wow, fact, wow. there never was a label on a bottle. It was mm-hmm. always just something they must have, you know, put in the bottle and they stored it. It was mostly red wine. Mm-hmm. Um, and we did visit... When we were at one of my relatives' homes, uh, we went into their basement and saw their wine cellar. But it was all their own wine. Yes, it was oh all the th- And so my mom's going to send a picture or two, mm-hmm. so maybe they'll turn up on the on Instagram. Instagram yeah. But yes, it was a very big deal. It was very traditional to make your own wine. Okay. So, yeah. So And then uh, did you ever drink it? Oh, I don't remember. But what I do remember is that we were, you know, like you know, 15, 14. My brother was, older brother was 18. But I'm sure we had a little bit here and there. But what I remember most of all was being at dinner one night and drinking their homemade wine Mm -hmm. and two little children who were adorable, but they were probably like six and eight. My gosh. And they were clowning around and playing and their uh, parents would, had poured them in like a little glass. Like Like a little juice glass. Like juice glass. A little bit of wine. And they just every once in a while. Did they water it down? They put. I don't think so. Oh my I don't gosh. remember. Wow. And they, but they were just kind of monkey around, and they were just playing and having fun. And then they just they were a drunk. Little, well, right. And <laughs> no. then they fell fast asleep. It was amazing. Brilliant. Oh my gosh, the Italians so <laughs> brilliant. Take a page from those Italians' books. No, but they would just drink it. And but you know what? It was part like you always say. It was a. The fifth food group, or is yeah. the fifth food group. So yeah. they were just enjoying it. It's just it. part of the food. Yeah, while they yeah, had yeah. dinner. Yeah. And it wasn't like they drank uh, too much of it or had an excessive amount, but it was just, for them, it probably complemented the food as much as it does for us. Yeah. Okay, last question for okay. you. Why? What would you say to people who are on the fence about visiting Puglia? Oh my God, get off the fence, people. Puglia is a beautiful area and one that should be on your bucket list for sure if you're going to Italy. It's, people are nice. People are so warm. Um, sometimes the north is known as being a little more aloof, but the people in Puglia are very warm. There's few, very few tourists, at least when I was there, and I think it's kind of held up to that. You know, I don't think as many people have that on well, their radar. I think Bari is pretty popular. Yeah, but. probably now. Um, it's warm and the food, another secret is that the food is 
far better in the South. Mm. I mean, food all over Italy is delicious, yeah. but you are just going to get the red, the really delicious red sauces and the seafood, especially in Bari and Puglia area, and the breads. Everything about it is just, um, just better, better. Okay. Better, different, but better. Different, better, but, right. but better, really. Okay, well, there you go. There so you go. So when are we Chatty going? Well, I, actually, I do want it. We still need to go. I know. We haven't been to my family's place in Calabria. We haven't been, mm. as a couple, we haven't been to Bari. So we got to go. Okay, I'm yeah. ready. Anytime. Okay, so, but before we do that, I think it's time we learned a little bit about Salice Salentino. Okay, so you're the chatty one. Yeah, yeah. And, the, <laughs> and the Negro Maro grape. Okay. And taste and review the wines that we bought for this episode. But first... You got to do your shameless plug. That's right. So first, we want to start by saying thank you for listening to us and for supporting our show. And if you haven't had the chance to do so yet, now would be a really awesome time to subscribe to the podcast. It's free and it's an awesome way to support us and you never have to miss a show. And thank you very much to all of you who have already subscribed. We really appreciate it. And then another great way to support us for free is to leave a nice rating and review on our website or Apple Podcasts or wherever you can do that kind of thing. And you can also follow us and see fun pictures pictures of the wines we are tasting and trying today on Instagram at the Wine Pair Podcast. And maybe we will have some pictures of your family and those kinds of things. Hmm. And then you can contact us on our website, which is thewinepairpodcast.com. And you can send us questions and ideas. And as we do every week, we'll tell you someone we think you should tell about the Wine Pair Podcast. And this week, we want you to tell anyone who thinks that Italy is just about beautiful cities and museums and needs to learn that it's also about beautiful beaches. Woo! Absolutely, you're missing out yep. if you don't head to the beach. And I'm not Italy. the beach person. No. I'm the city person. I know. You so like what the beaches. We, what have we done when we've, we've had to compromise? Italy? We've had to compromise. compromise. Yeah. I think I've given in. No, when <laughs> we were by the beach. True. Come on, we were there True. for like a week. Okay. <laughs> uh, and by the way, I do have to give a huge shout out to Allison Shea. Woo! And her husband, Dan, who came over to our house Chardonnay last weekend. Shea. Yeah, for Yeah, we came over for a little dinner party and schooled us on some really good Chardonnays. Yes. And so you win, Allison, okay? Woo. You've changed my mind on Chardonnay. I'm telling it's you. not the it worst wine in the world. It was definitely a win. No, it was good. We really had a great time. <laughs> yes. Okay, so Carmela, let's talk about what this wine, Salice Salentino, is all about. Okay, so first we'll say this again. Like many wines from Italy and France and Spain, Silice Salentino is an area, it's not the name of the grape, which can always be really confusing to people. I know it's confusing to me. And so, like, because we're just used to talking about the varietal. We're used to saying, I want a Cabernet Sauvignon, I want a Pinot Noir, I want a Chardonnay, I want a Mm -hmm. Sauvignon Blanc. Mm -hmm. But Silice Salentino is just one of those wines where you got to know what's in it. Right. Right. You just, you have to know it's, it's not, not your, that's not the grape. Not, yes. No, it makes sense. Yeah. So again, the wine grape in Salice Salentino is mostly or most commonly Negro Amaro. Okay. And that's found in many places in Italy, but it's almost exclusively grown in Italy. So mm. it's a very Italian wine grape. And Puglia, which is also called Apulia in Italian, is where the vast majority of Negro Amaro is grown. Okay. So now the name Negro Amaro, any idea what that might mean, Carmela? Uh, well, black, black or dark Amaro. Did yeah, you say? black and bitter. Oh, which is kind of a weird like yeah. that's not the first name you would choose like oh that grape or that wine sounds really bitter. good yeah hmm. but according to an article that I read on the interwebs and you can also find in our show notes uh, they say this the village folk still call it Niuru Maro instead of Negro Maro meaning bitter black and that's very typical hmm. because in most places in Italy there are especially in the south there are dialects. Right. And, oh, true. And, you know, and like, so words are things that we think we know. Mm-hmm. You may not know what they're talking about because they just pronounce it differently or right. they have a slightly different word for it's it. It's like, yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah. the dialects are very strong down in the South. Super strong, like to the point where you might not be able to understand right. them, even Almost if you think language. you speak Italian. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. And so Negro Maro is a very dark grape which should be obvious by its name, and it makes a very inky colored wine that's described as rustic. Oh. So now what do you think rustic means? Well, it's like it comes, I think, back to like that homemade exactly. type of wine. Exactly. Right? Yeah. It's like not refined. It's mm-hmm. a little rough edged. It's not polished. Maybe it's not as sophisticated or fancy. Well, but it can be. Yeah. But I think the other side of it, too, that you talked about, it's like it's traditional. It's real. It's honest. Mm. Like it's it's more down to Which earth. Which makes sense for the area, too. Yeah. 
think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah if you're for coming, sure. If you're coming up with a wine, that might be, you know, that would be what I would say about it. Yeah. And you don't remember drinking the wine. But another thing that people would say, probably if a rustic, in, a, in terms of like, what's a rustic wine? It's probably robust. You know, it's probably mm. like in your mm-hmm. face a little bit. It's probably chewy. It's probably not, you know, not filtered, those kinds of things. And then often. Interesting because I kind of, I was going to touch on this too, but I don't know. We'll see what this wine looks like. But I feel like when they would bring wine out, it was almost a little bit foggy yes probably because it had sediment in it yeah. and yeast still in it right. I and, remember and actually probably it. particles because they don't do the fining process which mm-hmm. is removing like particles and those kinds of things out of the line so i think that totally makes sense yeah. it's just yeah. not as it's not a filter to refine and that's fine like it's it's more traditional right it's right. more it's not it's it's maybe more old-fashioned wine making mm-hmm. right well for sure because when you do make things at home yeah it's not going to have, have all, the, all the same equipment. Yeah. That's right. So to me, you know, Rustic describes wines that maybe could prove a little bit more challenging to the average wine drinker who may be some, expecting something like soft and mellow. But like you said, it reminds me of the wines because when, when our grandparents came to America, they often made or my one of my side, they went to Canada, but they often made their own wine. Mm-hmm. And it was probably very much in that style, right? Just probably, rustic and yeah. natural and mm-hmm. traditional and how they made it back in the homeland. Right. They stomp on those grapes. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> with their No, like my mom tells stories about my Uncle Tolly yep. stomping on grapes I with his know. bare feet. Yep. Yeah. Gross. Crazy. Gross. And then they, they drank it. Yikes. Ah, yeah. Okay. Now, Salice Salentino, back to our wine, it can be made solely from Negro Amaro or it can be made by blending with a grape called Called Malvasia nera. Hmm. Uh, nera is also means dark or black. Uh, but at least 80% of the wine must be made from Negro Amaro in order to be called Salice Salentino. Okay, 80%. Uh, and as well as being from the area of Salice Salentino, it has to be at least 80% Negro Amaro. Okay. And by the way, two of the wines that we're drinking today are made from 100% Negro Amaro, and one is made from a blend of Negro Amaro and Malvasia Nera. Mm. And Malvasia Nera is a blending grape and helps add flavor and color uh, to the wine. It's adds, you know, some richness, some perfume. Perfume and it's supposed to have different, add some different flavors like berries and cherries and chocolate and sometimes smoke. So mm-hmm. there you go. Okay. Right. Mm. But Salice Salentino, again, the wine comes from a very specific area in the heel of the boot of Italy in Puglia in a region called Lecce, which is very oh, south uh-huh. in, in the heel. Mm. And they've been making wine for over a thousand years. Oh, wow. Yeah. And it's considered wow. one of the most important wine making areas in Italy, but it's also considered one of the most traditional and least industrialized wine making areas in Italy, which is another reason why this wine might be considered rustic. rustic yeah. yeah. And then, as you may expect, the weather in this part of Italy, as you've been saying, is very warm, and it's but it's also close to the water, which helps to kind of like cool it sometimes mm-hmm. cool the grape vines sometimes mm-hmm. at night and that kind of stuff so now in terms of flavor profiles Salice Salentino is sometimes compared to like a rougher version of a Merlot or a Zinfandel mm. uh, but but they can be smooth too so we'll see we'll see how it goes like if it's you know if it's super acidic or super tannic or if they've kind of mellowed out and then as would be expected as you said this is going to be a food-friendly wine because Italians think of wine, as you just said, as That's the fifth, fifth food, food group. group. Yeah. yeah, so it should go well with all sorts of foods, but also all sorts of Italian foods. And the nice thing is the Italian foods that we're used to and, and that have been populated around the world are Southern Italian foods. Yeah, it's so like true. Like pizza and, and pasta with and marinara sauce. sauce. And, yeah, yeah. So, mm-hmm. so guess what? This wine should go great with those foods. Interesting, too. I'm kind of curious because it's a red wine and it's... Yeah. So well known in Puglia, but Puglia is also so well known for their seafood. Yeah. And so I wonder if this is going to be like a seafood friendly red wine. I doubt it. Okay. I doubt so it. It sounds kind of big, too yeah. big. Maybe, yeah. I but think they would use a white, a white. Do what wine. kind of white wine do they drink down there? <laughs> that, that's for a whole nother episode, okay, Carmela. Well, maybe you when can, you just take me there, we can find out. There you go. Okay. That's how we'll do it. That's okay. how we'll do it. Okay. Uh, back to Salice Salentino. Yeah, yeah. I like, just want you all to know. Oh, I was like, don't ask me, me that question. The evil eye. I didn't, I didn't research that. Okay. Um, this is also a wine that can be drunk relatively young, but it does need some time to mellow out before you crack it. So mm. actually, Salice Salentino has to be aged for two years before they release it. Okay. So they don't even release it for the first two years. They, they are storing it. And then how long should you keep it in your cellar? Well, it can go. That's a great question. Uh, they say, you know, it can last six to seven years, like after you buy it. Mm-hmm. So probably about 10 years, it's going to uh, kind of hit the 
yeah, it's peak maybe and, and roll downhill. But interestingly enough, one of the wines that we have today and that you can still buy online is from a 2011. So we're going to oh, put the age to the test. Goodness. We're really going to put the age yeah. to the test. So then are these, um, they're reasonably priced? They're all reasonably priced. You're kind of jumping okay, ahead. Okay, I'm sorry. No, uh, the other thing, the last thing that I'll say about uh, Ceviche <laughs> Salentina is that it, it has to also be aged for 6 to 12 months in oak. Okay. So it's going to be a little bit okay. tannin yeah. and that kind of stuff. So, now, would yeah. you use your um, your what you call it? decanter? Your decanter yeah, on yeah, this for one, sure. like for for sure. Normally, normally I would. Okay. I think I would just because, like, yeah, it may need to like air out and mellow out a little bit. And by the way, we opened up the bottles that we're going to drink about a half an hour ago, so they've had a little bit of time to breathe, and I think that's good for a red wine. Uh, to give it a little bit of time to breathe. So this will be fun. It should be mm-hmm. a little bit different, lively, kind of fun Thanks for wine. thinking of me. Yeah, of course. And letting me, you know, have, you know, share the, the spotlight for a while. Of course, Carmela, <laughs> chatty Carmela. Wow. So now let's talk about the Salice Salentino wines that we chose for this episode, the specific ones. Okay. So as usual, as you said, all the wines that we've chosen for this episode are under $20, and all of them should be relatively easy to find because I bought them all either at Total Wine or at Wine.com. Okay. And And I think you can find these wines if you go to a wine shop or a grocery store with a decently large wine selection. And definitely if you go to a wine shop or a wine store that has an Italian wine section. Mm. So even though it's not a super common wine, it's also not a a rare wine. It's not like super hard to find. I think you may, though, have a hard time finding wines made from Negro Amaro grapes outside of Italy. Like they just don't like America... Uh, France, South America, they're not really making wines from Negro Amaro. You're really going to have to look for Italian wines, and Salice Salentino is one of those wines. Mm, okay. okay. So, the first wine we're going to be trying is called Marchese di Borgosole Salice Salentino Riserva. And while it can be found at many other wine shops, because I did look this up, it is a winery direct wine from Total Wine. So that's kind of, they have special deals and they do these winery direct. So now Wine Enthusiasts gave the 2018, which is what we're drinking today, an 87 rating. Okay. Now, 87 is a good rating. Mm -hmm. Like, I think sometimes people are like, oh, it's not 90. Why should I drink it? But like, I would say if we gave a wine, like we in our rating system, 87 would probably be equivalent to when we give a wine like a 7. It's good. Mm -hmm. Drink it. Buy it. We'd buy it. Yeah. Yeah. Now, this wine is made with 100% Negro Maro grapes, uh-huh. and they use uh, malolactic fermentation, which is used to sort of mellow out a wine. Okay. And so, in theory, I think this may not be quite as rustic as some Salice Salentinos may be, but we're going to find that out. They ferment the wines in stainless steel tanks, and then they age the wine for at least two years, and six of those are in six, six of those, six, <laughs> six, six of those months of years. those, yeah, <laughs> six months of those two years are in oak barrels. Okay. And then it was kind of hard to find, and this was kind of true for a lot of these wines it was hard to find too many more specifics than that so you know like about the people who made it and all that kind of stuff so we're just going to move on okay we're going to move on okay i'm ready the second wine we're drinking today is called Cantele Salice Salentino Reserva, and it's also 100% Negro Amaro. And similar to the previous wine, it's fermented in stainless steel tanks and it is this wine Carmela is fined so they use the fining okay, process, okay. which again... That'll be interesting. I'm glad you have one that is fined. Yeah, and this is also a little bit interesting. So they fine it. So fining, again, is removing some of the particles mm-hmm. and residual that's left out of the wine. But they, they do say that they use an animal product. So a lot of times they'll use like egg so or something to vegetarian. find... it's not vegetarian. It's not vegan. It's not oh, vegan. right. Oh, right. No, you're right. So, yeah. So they actually say that. Yeah, they say it. Because that's kind of unusual, right? Uh, I think it's unusual that they would tell you what the, that the fining agent was from an animal product. But this is actually, we did an episode with Joe, I did an episode with Joey uh, and Kira. And uh, yeah, it was episode 41 on vegan wines. So if you want to know more about vegan wines, check out that episode. But the fining process has a lot to do with whether or not a wine is vegan. Because I think that's confusing to people like, well, it's made from grapes. Why wouldn't it be vegan? And it's because sometimes they use these agents to get rid of particles that are made from animals, animal so products. Interesting. And then sometimes they don't, and which will make them uh, vegan. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, the Cantelle group, they aged their wines for six months in French oak. Uh, and as we've said in other episodes, French oak is a little bit more mellow than American oak. And then in general, when you see the word reserva or reserva, 
uh, or reserve on a wine, it generally means it's aged a little bit longer, particularly mm. in oak. And okay. that's what they did probably in these. And this is a 2018 vintage of the wine. That's the one that we're going to do. They don't have any ratings for it, but Wine and, Wine Spectator and Wine Enthusiast gave the year before the 2017 and 88. So, okay. And then they started this winery in 1979. It was a father and two sons that had moved from Puglia from an area near Bologna, which is in northern Italy. And today, the children and the grandchildren run it. Oh, so there you go. That's nice. kind of fun. Mm-hmm. And then the last wine is this old wine I was talking about. Old. Uh, it's called Torino Salice Salentino, and it's a 2011. Amazing. So again, have we drank a wine that's been that old? Uh, not on this show. Yeah, that's what I mean. But on I the think, show? yeah, of course, we've drunk wines that age and older, right? Right. right. Um, but uh, this is this is the one wine too that we're tasting today that is a blend. So it's ninety okay. percent Negro Amaro and then ten percent Malvasia Nera. And then this is kind of interesting too. The Torino winemakers they say that they pick both of the grapes together, the Negro Amaro and the uh, Malvasia Nera together. And they ferment them together in stainless steel. Hmm. And so I'm making the assumption, and I should know this, but I don't really know this, but I'm making the assumption that this is unusual since they're calling it out. Because I think what typically happens is a lot of times winemakers will ferment different, like if you're making a Bordeaux blend, you're fermenting Cabernet and you're fermenting Merlot or whatever else that you're putting in it. And then you're blending it later. These guys, they blend it from the get go. Hmm. Like they're just putting them together. So does that mean, I mean, is it different than a blend then? Uh, it is a blend, but I think t- again, typically, what happens in wine blends when you talk about a right, red wine blend, they separate them and then separate, they blend and then, them. And then but because and each them year, at the beginning, yeah, and each year may have a slightly different blend mm-hmm. they because don't they tell want to, you the no, percentage well, they normally, may, no, they, they they might, they might, but oh. I think each year they want to like do their own blending so they get some consistency because one year they may need a little bit more of that wine or a little right. bit more of this wine, mm-hmm. but these guys are not waiting; they're just putting them together and. And, and they always them. have the same percentage? Uh, I, I guess so. Hmm. Yeah, I guess so. Okay. So, And then uh, they also age their wines in what they call a medium toast French oak barrel. So I guess that, that means it's not fully toasted. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then they age them for four to six months in those barrels. Okay, huh. And then uh, one of the publications that I found out about this wine indicated that they use sustainable farming practices in their growing grapes. And then, which again is a case for all these wines. I, I, just finding out a ton about a ton about the wines was was not super easy, mm. but I think we found enough. What do you think? For sure. Okay. And then we have links to all of this information and more in our show notes. So if you head over to our website and you look for this episode and you click on the show notes, you can find it. But if all I out. said, what if I just said, actually, we don't have enough information. <laughs> I would just stop and turn it off. And I don't be know. It. Why I thought that would that be was it. Funny. That would be it. Of it course, was funny. But, yeah. That was funny. Okay. <laughs> So on that note, I think uh, we've been talking and laughing and making jokes long enough. So I think we get to drinking. What do you say? Sounds like a plan. All right. We are going to pause and we are going to try our first Aliche Salantino. Woo! Okay, we are back and we are ready to try our first wine. And I'm going to talk about it and you can start smelling it, Carmela. This is the Marchese di Borgo Sole Salice Salentino Reserva. This is from Puglia, from the Salice Salentino region. The producer is Marchese di Borgo, Borgo Sole. This is a 2018. The price was $11.69. Wow. So it's not very expensive. Mm-hmm. And I got it at Total Wine. 13.5% alcohol. It's 100% Negro Amaro. And again, the wine enthusiast gave this an 87. Oh. So what are you smelling? Mm. Oh, it's nice. I smell smoke right away. Mm. And I also smell... Um, I was getting cherry. Like okay. Black yeah, cherry for right sure, off the Well, bat. for sure. For sure. I think that I'm getting that as well. But I did get smoke. Um, I'm getting smoke. Mm-hmm. I'm getting some wood for sure. Mm-hmm. I think it's very pleasant smelling. What's the alcohol on this? 13.5. Yeah, I can kind of smell the alcohol. I'm almost getting like a licorice smell, like a red licorice kind of smell on it, like too. Like a really dark licorice, though, like a deep-tasting mm-hmm. red lipper- licorice. Yeah, but I guess I'm... Uh, yes, and I guess I'm getting a little, like, sweetness. That can, it can just That's what I'm getting. Mm, I think nice. we taste it. Okay. Oh, wow. Ooh. It's a little more tart than I expected. I, yeah, it's a little more of a tart cherry. Yeah. I was expecting mm. a little bit more like, like, a, like a sweeter cherry or something, but it's a little tarter than I expected. It's yeah. pretty tannic, like it's tr- drying can, off the tongue. Yes, but I am feeling like it's filling my mouth. Like it's definitely, f- uh, fill, you know, it's sticking around, not in a in a nice way, though. Yeah. You know, it's, but it's, uh, I don't know if that would be kind of a full body. Or yeah, like a, you it's know. definitely at least medium body. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure if it's like completely full body, but it's got some good body on it. 
it's nice flavor. Ooh. Like I'm getting a lot of cherry. That's yes. what I feel like I'm getting a lot of cherry taste. Lots of cherry and more of a tart cherry. Yeah. For Although sure. I'm getting a little more sweet, like a that like maybe like a sour cherry ball or something yeah. on it. Ooh, yeah. yeah. I, or like a like a um like a red plum. Okay. Okay. A little bit uh, of purple. Okay. Not an Italian plum. Not no. like a, you know, the not purple. One of those, yeah, purple More plums. of a purple rather than the blue plums. Yeah. Okay. Do you know what uh, I mean? Sure. Sure, mm-hmm. sure, sure. Mm. It's, it's nice. It's pleasant. What would you like to eat with this, my dear? Yeah, it's funny that you went right to that because I don't know that there's that much more to it. Like, it's nice wine. No, it is. But it, and the thing it's is, it's pleasant. I like right. it. Right. It's uh, it's very, um, it's enjoyable. Mm-hmm. It's not a puncher in your face like too much it's kind of it's not aggressive Mm -mm. it's very i wouldn't say it's like super smooth but it's just like um it's a likable wine i guess i wouldn't quite call it rustic either though i don't think think it doesn't doesn't have rough it's not rough around the edges no it's it's nice and it doesn't and it's pretty it's It's very dark yeah yeah it is dark but i wouldn't say it's as dark as some of the wines no but it's pretty dark yeah it is okay Mm -hmm. food i would have with it definitely like pizza I'd definitely have like pizza. I'd have Italian food. Oh, yeah, like, I was a nice like tomato a, sauce, lasagna, Sunday, Sunday roast, mm-hmm. or like a Sunday gravy. You know, like you'd have. I guess that's more. Yeah, I guess I'm kind of feeling though like a lot of red, like red, like marinara sauce, yes. like red so- tomato sauce. Mm-hmm. How about like a meat sauce with like mm-hmm. totally. meatballs, bolognese? Oh, I mm-hmm. think like meatballs with the red yeah. sauce would be delicious. Yeah, with this. Yeah, but yeah, a neil or a, a, a pizza. Pizza for sure. Cheese would be good, like a rich cheese, like a cheddar cheese or right. those kinds of cheese. And, a mozzarella, I guess. Right. You know. Italian meats, like mm-hmm. we could do some salami. Oh, yeah. And Salumi. Yeah, for Oof. sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Be mm. really good. Mm-hmm. Okay. Anything else that you would uh, you would pair with it? I think we hit them all. Yeah. It's funny. Like, I feel like we're going kind of fast through this section, but what else are you going to do? Like, yeah. it is what it is. Well, and okay. that's the thing is it's, it's just very likable. There's yeah, nothing I, that's like... Like me. Yeah kind of likable wow yeah i mean i wouldn't say it's average <laughs> like me i wouldn't say it was like you like average no oh. no but i wouldn't Below say average no no i think I it's just like oh, it's just right okay. no okay I mean, good yeah. right no you're perfect oh wow that's nice mm-hmm. okay so let's talk about our rating scale because okay. we're gonna rate this sucker okay we rate on a scale of one to ten and seven and above means that we would buy it and four and below means that we're probably gonna pour it down the sink and a five or a six means hey i'll drink it i'll probably i'll finish it but if there's something else i might look for it but i'm fine like i'm fine i'm not but i'm not gonna buy it okay, okay so what rating would you give this wine i think I would give it a seven. I think so too. To me, it's a solid seven. Yeah. It's a nice wine. It's a good everyday wine. I like think for so eleven dollars and my goodness sixty nine cents. It's a pretty good everyday wine. Right. I also think it's a crowd pleaser. I think, I think so the non red wine drinkers would well. You're enjoy not a, this. you're not really a red wine drinker, and you're liking. Yeah, I I am really enjoying it, and it, it's very likable. I think for across the board. Yeah, I think it has it has a few aspects of like a Pinot Noir to me. It yes. has a few aspects of like a yes. Cabernet Franc, not a Cabernet Sauvignon, but like a Cabernet Franc, or a mm-hmm. little bit maybe even of a Gamay. Like it's kind of a lighter, easier yes. easier to drink red wine. I would agree. So, all right, good. Mm-hmm. And well, it's from the homeland. And it's from Puya. Okay. Well, I think we're going to. Well, this is good. So good. Good number one wine. Yeah. We're gonna take a break and we're gonna try our next wine. Okay. Okay, we are back and we're ready to try our next wine. And all I can tell you, ladies and gentlemen, is that in that break, Carmela has challenged me about 14 <laughs> different ways. Like, we should talk about why they would want to drink the wine and we and should talk about like, the bottle and we should like, talk about this. It's not like, in the script, Carmela. Yeah. Oh, it's so fine. Stop. It's fine. We're going to go through it right now. <laughs> Jay, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna talk about it. First well, of all, the wine bottle. Do you want me to pose bottle. the questions? Yeah, go ahead. Well, first of all, I just want to say the first bottle, I've never seen this. It had like an accessory oh, on it. Oh, sometimes they have that little I little, it. little It had like a little twine. rope or twine and it was connected to this little like label. mini label yeah, and it was kind of cute i was yeah. like what is this all about you could use it for like a hair tie you could use it. <laughs> no it's... wrap it around your finger if you yeah. want to remember something exactly that's remember right. the the wine that you that's, just drank that's right mm. or remember something from okay, the night okay keep going anyway so part of me was thinking that we should probably talk about like reasons like why would you serve this wine when you have all... first of all we've given sevens we've given a seven to a lot of wines oh, that boy. we've enjoyed now she's judging no and I think that because there's so many wines to try, and I don't know if people just listen to the podcast and then they go running out and buy this, but what would be a reason that you would serve this in place of like a Pinot Noir or some of your like, you know, like go-to wines? Okay. So first of all, this is what I'd say. If okay. you're in an Italian restaurant and they have Salice Salentino, try it. 
like, don't just get the Cabernet and don't just get the Chianti. Okay. Try this wine. It might be on the wine menu. Try it. Especially like, so if you're for, having a tomato sauce. Yeah. Pasta. So the first thing I'd say is like, ex, you know, ex, have a little adventure when you go out. Like, go to a restaurant and have the ethnic wines from those areas. Mm-hmm. I think that's fun. Second is, I think if you're doing like a pizza party, you know, you're having friends over and you're going to do a pizza party or you're going to do Italian spaghetti feed or whatever. Right. Like you're just, or you want to serve Italian, to, like. Bring this wine out and make it a conversation piece. Ah. Like, hey, you've never Have you probably... been to Puglia? Yeah, or you've probably <laughs> never had this wine before, but, you know, this is a really great... We're just going to try this wine. We're going to see what you think. It's You know, so I think that'd be really fun mm-hmm. as part of, like, a dinner party experience to say, hey, and we're going to try this wine you probably never heard of before. Right, right. Okay, I like those reasons. Jeez, am I okay? Can I move on now? No. Okay, okay yes. All right, so this wine is called the Cantele Celice Salentino Reserva. This is also from the same place, Alice Salentino in Puglia. The producer is Cantele. This is also a 2018. This was $15.99 at wine.com. It's 13% alcohol, and it's 100% Negro Amaro. And Carmela, what are you smelling with this one? Okay, so it's interesting because it's it's richer smelling it, I was to just me gonna right say out the of the same gate. Thing. I want to say that I do smell like a little earth. Oh my gosh, I was going to say the same thing. Really? Earthy. Really? Yeah. It is kind of earthy. It, um, and then I am getting kind of um. This has that, more complexity to yeah, it. Yeah, I'm, I'm still getting like that licorice, but it's more. But then I'm also getting like a really dark cherry mm-hmm. on the nose. What I think I'm getting you? some rose too. Okay, I think I'm getting rose on it. Mm, okay, a little floral there, mm-hmm. and maybe just a, like a speck of like tar. Okay, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. just like a little bit of that kind of tar smell. Okay, I think yeah. we taste it. Let's do it. Yeah. It's Ooh. it's exactly like you mm-hmm. were describing. It's richer. Yes, it is. That first wine Ooh, is super it's nice, super light and easy mm-hmm. going, and and all that. This is Approachable. like approachable. Yeah, this has more more depth to it, more flavor to it. Yes, I can you more know like complex. more complex, but it's still it's very pleasant. It's mm-hmm. not like again like smacking Knocking me in the you face. Over the head, no, no, I, I really like it actually. It's, it's not quite as tart as the no. Other it one. seems like it's how. What's the year on this one? Same, 2018. Okay, yeah. But this one feels like it's more ready. That one, maybe it was a little bit... No, I think that's the wine. Okay. I think it's a okay. just kind of like a cheaper... And I don't mean that in any negative way. Just like a $4 cheaper... $4 cheaper yeah. bottle of yeah. wine. Yeah. <laughs> At eleven ninety nine. No, this has got more depth, more flavor. I'm getting more... Like, I feel like I'm biting into a cherry when I'm, I'm drinking this mm-hmm. wine. Because it's got... I'm getting some of that mouth Ooh. feel around it. I'm getting some of the... Like, the tannins are... They say sometimes grippy. I can mm-hmm. feel the grippiness of the tannin yes. in this one. And I almost feel like the the cherry skin is yes. kind of what I'm tasting. That's too. what I'm saying. Like yeah. That, chewing a cherry. Because yeah. sometimes, the, yeah, that skin is a little more intense, yeah. you know, than the inside meat or mm-hmm. whatever you would call that. Yeah, in the cherry? fruit. I don't know. Yeah. The fruit. Yeah. The fruit. Yeah. It's good. I'm I'm getting really that nice. yeah it's it's it it it's got a nice finish. Sometimes they talk about the finish of a wine. It's got a nice mm-hmm. finish. Like mm-hmm. you still have a little taste of it on your tongue, but it's very pleasant. It's nice. It's not so tannic either. I mean, like it's tannic, but it's not like the type where sometimes it's the, not the super big ones oaky. that you drink with my dad. Yeah, they're just they just your mouth is so dry at the end. Yeah, I, I also know. think that like sometimes a big red wine can be super oaky and super like yeah. chewy and blah, blah. Like this is this isn't that. Like no. it's it's more mellow. It's it's smoother. It's I, another I really approachable wine. Totally. Mm-hmm. What food would you pair with this? You know, I think a lot of the same things, mm-hmm. but I think you could even do something more intense like a puttanesca yeah um you could you could do some more of those spicier uh, uh dishes that you would mm-hmm. have um i'm thinking a puttanesca for some reason like yeah. olives and capers and that would really hold up well with this wine too. yeah i also think this would be like i can see this with some vegetarian dish like a eggplant parmigiana Ooh, you know you could have so it with nice. that you yes. could have it with just a you know no meat mm-hmm. i think the first one needs a little bit of meat i think this one has got such nice flavor it could kind of like hang out on its own mm-hmm. i think it'd be really good with like bruschetta i think it'd be really good Ooh, with a caprese i think yeah. it'd be really good with the burrata like it's really a nice yes. wine it's wine you could have like throughout the evening eating all sorts of different foods right. and we're drinking it by itself and it's really nice i just think with food this would be outstanding mm-hmm. like, i do too really and nice i like wine. all of the things that you mentioned and olives. all of my 
all you of, said all yeah, of well, it. I think all, all of them yeah. would be great. Well, and that's why that puttanesca, because it is a vegetarian dish, mm-hmm. typically, but that would be another really good one. But you like hit on all my favorites, too. Yeah. Eggplant parmigiana. Yeah. There yeah. you go. Okay, so what rating would you give this wine, Carmela? Mm. A solid eight. I oh, mean, you're giving I, it an eight. I'm going to give it an eight. You don't give red wine, ladies and gentlemen. She does not give red wine again. The homeland, very the often. Homeland. I guess it's the mother. A little bit of bias. It's a point. <laughs> no. There's a point plus bias in this. Yes. No, but no, I'm, I'm no. giving it an eight as well. Okay. I really like it. I would definitely buy this wine. Mm-hmm. I'm I'd buy them look both. For this. Like, this is nice. Do you think they sell this in restaurants? For, yeah, I'm. I'm. I mean, like I said, like I think Italian if you go to an Italian restaurant, you should look for Salice Salentino and see if they sell this wine, the Cantelli. It's really nice. Okay. okay. Well, we're going to take a break, and we are going to try our last wine. Okay. Okay, we are back, and we're ready to try La Salice Salentino. This is the Taurino Salice Salentino. It's same place, Puglia. Uh, Salice Salentino, <laughs> the producer is Tarino. This is a 2011. Oh my. This was 17. Oh my. <laughs> this was $17.99 at wine.com. This is 14% alcohol. And again, this is the blend. This is the 90% Negro Amaro and the 10% Malvasia Nera. And what are you smelling, Carmela? Well, I think, well, you said, I won't, I'll let you say what you were thinking, but. Super earthy. Yeah. Yeah. I think so too. And it's funny because they. Uh, these are, well, the last two have been very earthy, and it doesn't strike me as- This is as, way more earthy. Yeah. Mushroomy, almost. Yes, true. But it doesn't, like, remind me of Puya. Hmm. But what about going down to the, the basement where they have the wine cellar? Does it smell like the wine well, cellar? Well, a little bit. Like, when you think about it in that That's what sense. this smells like to me. This but smells like, like we're going I'm, into a basement. Yeah, because- With, with a, when with it's a cooler, dirt floor. Yeah, true. That is kind of true. Although, I feel like in the summer when you're there- it's dusty or it's not as damp, you know, so it's just a different... I don't know. I guess I was thinking of, that it would smell like the sea. My, mm, I yeah. wouldn't have thought that. <laughs> no. This has mm. some... It has some fruit, but I'm thinking more plummy, a little more plum kind of smell mm. to it. Or am I... Like am, a are, stewed plum? Okay, like yeah. Like a cooked plum? Something like hot off the stove? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or maybe even like a cooked cherry or something. Mm-hmm. There's something else, though. It's smoky. It's got smoke, smoke on it yeah. and a little tar on it, too. Maybe even, like, tobacco mm. Yeah, a little it's, sweetness from the tobacco. Like yeah, a sweet tobacco. like a sweet tobacco. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would say, like, of the three, this is this has the least appealing smell, but probably the most... Strongest de- and, and deepest mm-hmm. smell. Like, most complex smell. Okay, let's try it. Okay. Ooh, tart. It is tart. It's more like the first one. Mm-hmm. More of a tart. Not as much fruit on it. No, well, I mean, it's a 2011. Yeah. You know, so it's been around for, to me, this is like a tart plum. It's almost yeah. like tart blue. It's like a tart black. It's like a. Like a blackberry. Blackberry. Yeah. Like tart. Like it's a tart berry taste. Yes. Bla- even more than a cherry. Or even like a cranberry okay. or something. I, I think or so too. Pomegranate. Or, or- uh, you know, they talk about um, like a black currant. Oh. Currants can be kind of sweet, but they can also be kind of tart. For yeah, sure. yeah, true, true. Yeah, but this, I am thinking kind of like that blackberry, raspberry, pomegranate, something with a little sour edge to it. Mm-hmm. It's it's a little bit less, it lingers a little bit more. Yeah. It doesn't have the same kind of like tannin. And it's older. I mean, it's quite a bit older. It so. is, but it doesn't have like kind of richness. It's almost like thinned out. I wonder if it maybe is past its prime. Hmm. I wonder if it's just kind of thinned out too yeah, much. maybe, maybe. Because it, it, it does, it has a thinness to it. It doesn't have as much oomph to it. I was kind of excited to have an older wine, but I just don't think it has like, to me, it doesn't have the character of an older wine. No. It almost, it's almost like it's kind of weakening as yeah, an older wine. Interesting, huh? What mm. what food would you have? With, I think it would do okay with food. Oh, yeah. Actually, it might be better with food, actually. Yeah. And again, I think you could do those meat Pizza, sauces. Pizza, pasta. Too. Yeah. I think yeah. it would hold up to any of those things. But yeah. I, And I think it might complement it. I mean, it might actually change the wine a little bit, too. Yeah. Yeah. So. Hmm. I'm with you. I mean, this is what I would say, like, it's not a bad wine. Like, uh, it's it's not a bad wine. I think compared to the other two, it's not quite as good. And I do wonder if it's just a little bit over the hill. Could be. Know. Like me. Never. I am over the hill. You aren't. I'm under the hill. Okay. That's right. What a rating would you give this one? Well, you know, but after, you know, I it's hard. Like, we'll get this wow. One. Uh, you know, I don't think I'm going to probably choose to buy this one yeah i think i'm gonna give it a six yeah i think i'm gonna give it a six and again we may be plus wanting these on our ratings cause, right because it's from the the, the home country mm-hmm. the i mean this again country. this is a it's it is not offensive it's 
you easy to drink. Like, there's nothing wrong with it's, it. I just don't, especially compared to the other two, I would hard. choose the other two first. Yeah. Yeah. Having this come in number three is probably a little bit against it. Yeah. Um, but I think some people, you know, because it does, I think some people would actually really enjoy this wine mm -hmm. because it does have it, it, some, you know, depth that some people really appreciate too. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. I just think it's thinner. It's thinner than I expected mm -hmm. it to be. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the turn and off for me. And it's actually. A lighter wine. It is in lighter. Color. And that could be part of the age too. Mm -hmm. Sometimes as wines age, they the color kind of uh, fades a little bit too, mm. lightens up. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Um, which of these wines are you finishing tonight? Oh, Carla? I think that uh, if I had my druthers, I would drink number two. Yeah, I think so too. I think I would do the Cantele as yeah. well. Okay. So let's talk about the taste profiles that are expected from a Salice Salentino. Okay. This is what our friend Chat GPT says ah. rich, complex aroma of a ripe red and black fruit, such as cherries, blackberries, plums, with hints of spice, tobacco, and earthy notes. We're definitely getting that. Mm -hmm. The taste, full-bodied, firm tannins, high acidity, rich, fruity flavor profile, ripe cherry, blackberry, chocolate, coffee, and vanilla. Oh. Uh, and then Wine Folly says black cherry, black plum, blackberry, prune, and dried thyme. So that might be some of the okay, earthiness, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. The Marchese di Burgo Sole, wine enthusiast said cherries and blackberries sit on top of soil, underbrush, and mm. a bit of wood smoke on the nose, while the palate... Moves into darker, denser fruit from black cherries and blackberries to figs and raisins with chocolate and some salty, rocky gravel. And James <laughs> Suckling said aromas of walnuts. Hmm. I didn't get that. In the first one? No. Stewed blackberry, smoked meat, roasted coffee on the nose. I, I don't know. Sometimes I wonder what he's tasting. Wow. That was not that wine. The second wine, maybe. You just maybe. judge right out of the gate, though, when it's Jimmy. Yeah, I do. Okay, the Cantelli. The winery says, candied fruits and spices that evolve into a clean underbrush tea and amber notes, enhanced by notes of red flowers, aromas return on the palate, blah, blah, blah. Okay, I don't know. They didn't, I thought that there was a lot more richness in that one. Hmm. And then the Torino Italy says, there's a rich, slightly rustic mouthfeel to a finished wine imbued with slightly burnt, earthy quality that accentuates deep roasted plum and mocha toned fruit with notes of spices. Hmm. I think we got more of that on the nose than we did on the mouth. Yeah, you I know? would agree. And mm -hmm. the shelf talker says, flavors of pepper, cola, and cherries follow through to a long, satisfying finish. The cola is interesting. Yeah. I can hmm. see that a little bit of cold, almost Dr. Peppery. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah, okay. Hmm. So what do you think overall of our Italian wine adventure to oh, the Salice Salentino area? I thought it was wonderful, and now I'm just itching to go. Itching? itching. Are you, you got a problem? You got a little a, bit of a problem. You got, you got some got, sort of like, hey, like a disease, or did you get bitten by a bug, you're a little itchy? Well, it's <laughs> getting to be that time of year again. That's true, it's true. Wow, it's spring, wow. the bugs spring are starting has to come sprung. out. That's right, and and then my allergies are starting to spring, right, so and I'm itchy, getting itchy. Getting a little itchy. You're right, my eyes exactly. were, last night, I was, what was I? I was like, complain, oh, my eye. Well, yeah, is it red? <laughs> can, you, can you see it? You feel like there's like something in it. Yeah, your finger's in it, dummy. That's what you said to me. I did it. No, you didn't. No, this is fun. Again, fun. I think if, again, the excuse or the reason to try it is like Italian restaurant, yeah. Try it. Well, and it's also fun just to explore, like we've been doing, different areas of Italy, of totally. course, and of the world. Because then you're all of a sudden like, who knows if somebody takes a trip to Puglia or if there's are throwing... you going to a restaurant right. that's of some ethnic or country origin? Right. Try their wines. Yeah. Don't be Do afraid. It. Do Don't it. just get your Cabernet or your Chardonnay. You explore right. you a little know, bit. Yeah. You know? Live it up. Come on. Live you it. Know? Think outside the box. That's, Drink outside of the box. Think outside the bottle. What? what? I don't know. Okay. Well, on that note, I think it's time for us to go. Uh, but before we do, again, we want to thank you very much for listening to us. And if you haven't done so yet, you know, this would be an awesome time to subscribe mm -hmm. and an awesome time to leave us a nice rating and review on our website or Apple Podcasts or wherever you do that as a free way to support us and let people know about us and they can help find us and grow listeners and all wow. that fun stuff. Wow. So, And we'd love to hear from you and Maybe there's some other wines or areas that you want us to explore. So let us know. You can leave a message you for can, us. You know, send us a plane ticket. We'll be happy we'll go. to we will explore go. it. If you happy. send us a plane ticket, we promise we will go. Okay. Uh, but you can leave a message for us on our website, thewinepairpodcast.com. You can email us at joe at thewinepairpodcast.com. And you can also follow us on Instagram at thewinepairpodcast, and where you can see pictures and all that kind of stuff. And we'd love to hear from you. And you know what? Tell, tell your friends about this episode and then go on a date night with them or have a dinner party, Italian food, and have ceviche salentino. Good How about idea. That? How about that? Okay. So uh, with that, we're going to sign off. And so thank you again, and we'll see you next time. And as we like to say, life is short, 
So stop drinking the shitty wine. Ciao ciao. Ciao ciao.